just behind me and alongside here is what is called the Tomb of Noah. Now this is you know, about 30 miles from Baalbek in a small village. But check this out, look how long this is. This is like 120 feet long. And uh, apparently it was longer. Uh, it continues actually into the next building. And it's said that Noah, the patriarch of the Bible, Noah's flood, Noah's ark, is actually buried here in this tomb. And what's amazing is, is that he was supposed to have been, he was so tall that he was folded in half before he was placed in this ridiculously long tomb. And so we have something quite remarkable here, a legend that's kind of come to life. And it's known that this has been here for several hundred years, since about the 14th or 15th century. And there was inscriptions here suggesting this was an ancient burial place, potentially of the patriarchs coming down from Mount Hermon. It said that Noah's Ark landed near here, and so he ended up being buried here. Um, so whether there's any truth in this or whether this is just part of an ancient Roman aqueduct, because you know this is also a Roman area, we don't know. But check this out, it's absolutely amazing. So here we have one end of Noah's tomb and we'll take a little walk along the full length of it because it's going to take a minute or two and uh, supposedly it's 25 metres or you know, 120 feet, something like that, four feet high and he must have been very thin, especially because he was folded in half as well. You can just get a sense of scale, you've got JJ walking down it there just so you can see the size of this, it's quite a remarkable feat in itself, whatever it might have been. It's clearly a sacred place to the Muslims here, and the Christians no doubt. And you can see all their books and prayer materials all along the length of this. What's interesting is that Mark Twain actually wrote about this uh, and, he, and, I, and uh, in The Innocence Abroad. And he said, Noah's tomb is built of stone and is covered with a long stone building. Bakshish let us in. The building had to be long because the grave of the honored old navigator is 210 feet long, which is we're only seeing half of it here. It's only about four feet high uh, at its highest. Though, I quote, he must have cast a shadow like a lightning rod. The proof that this is the genuine spot where Noah was buried can only, only be doubted by uncommonly incredulous people. The evidence is pretty straight. Shem, the son of Noah, was present at the burial and showed the place to his descendants, who transmitted the knowledge to their descendants. And the lineal descendants of these introduced themselves to us today. It was pleasant to make the acquaintance of members of the so respectable a family. It was a thing to be proud of. It was the next thing to being acquainted with Noah himself. So it's very interesting that we have this, but we also have other tombs of Noah. Another one is in Turkey, at a place called Sizre, and it's on the Tigris, north of the location where Iraq, Turkey, and Syria meet. Uh, to the east is Kudi Dag, which is identified as Mount Ararat in some traditions. So this is amazing to be here. No bones have clearly been found here, but the tomb of Noah is well worth a visit if you're in Lebanon. thing is, this isn't the end. It continues through that wall into another building which we can't go in. So all this is just half of Noah and he was folded in half. This is, this is amazing. So clearly they believed Noah was a giant. We know his sons and his descendants were certainly giants. So why not Noah himself? All these patriarchs who lived to a great age and were called giants or thought of as giants. Now these were the people who really were 
responsible probably for Baalbek. We have giant accounts from Baalbek itself with the giant skull that was so large you could pass your head through it, as well as others near Beirut where bones were found all on these hills in a sarcophagus. So the giant legends persist and this is one of the most amazing places I've been to, whether it's an actual grave or not. It still has legendary status and has been revered for many hundreds of years since at least the 1400s, maybe the 1200s even. So that alone suggests this is a very sacred place. So we're just, out, we're just outside the entrance to the tomb of Noah, which you can just see in there. But look, there's ruins here. Now, it's said that these are Roman ruins, but there's good evidence that the Phoenicians or the Canaanites were around in this area. And all along here, we see pieces of stone scattered around. And outside here is evidence of an ancient construction. And you can see Phoenician-type tomb lids. Also, you've obviously got Islamic things here as well from the later day because they revered Noah just like the Christians did and uh, all over there in the distance and there's not much to see here really we, we have to respect them because they're praying at the moment so we're not going to speak too loudly we're not going to go in the, the main mosque pray prayer room but you have you know stones here all the way down here and it seems like it's a kind of modern necropolis but the fact is this houses the tomb of Noah 